Hey everyone, it's Wendy and this is So It Begins. It's a series where I try to give you everything you need to begin sewing. Today, as promised from the previous video in this series, we're going on a deep dive into sewing machines. If you are a super loyal longtime subscriber, you know that I have done a couple of sewing machine videos in the past, but in those ones, I only had my own sewing machine to demonstrate on, plus my machine is no longer really available for purchase. And so this video is gonna be different and it's because we are a bit grown from the previous sewing videos and I actually have a sewing machine sponsor. I am happy to do this with Sewing Machines Plus because they have a huge selection of machines. They do free shipping above $49, which I mean, if you're in the world to buy sewing machines, it's not that hard to pass $49. Don't let that scare you, but I'm I'm just telling it like it is. They have a couple of financing options if you wanna pay on a monthly basis instead of paying the whole thing on front. And you can call in to sewing experts that'll help you make your purchase decision. That's definitely something that a place that specializes in sewing machines can do better for you than like a general retailer where they just happen to have sewing machines, but you're like, I help. And lastly, the final thing that makes me love sewing machines plus is we're doing a giveaway. If you stick around till the end of the video, I'll have all those details for you. I thought we could start this off with talking about some shopping criteria. A lot of these actually, I would even go so far to say as they are non-negotiable, but at the same time, the vast majority of machines that are being sold these days will have these features. So this is more like, just be sure they have these, but chances are you'll be okay. The first thing you might see when you look at a sewing machine's features is the number of stitches that it has. And this can be like, it ranges from like five to 30 or more. But in all honesty, there are four stitching features that you really wanna make sure you have if you're a beginner. You want straight stitch, you want zigzag stitch, you want reverse, and you want buttonhole stitching. Beyond these four, most of the other stitches are decorative or serve like a really specific purpose, but you can make do with these four perfectly fine. The next thing you wanna look for are three adjustments that you can make to your stitches. Width, length, and the tension of the thread as you're going through the sewing machine. Next up are features that make it easier for you to use your sewing machine. There's about five things in here that I think if you're gonna like buy one and never buy again, these are five things that I think you should really look out for. First one is how the bobbin is changed. And if you're a beginner, you're probably gonna go for a drop-in bobbin instead of front load bobbin. I'll show you what I mean by that, but just drop in, drop in. You want drop in. <laughs> There's probably so many front load bobbin people now who are like, what? Front load is fine too, I'm just saying for a beginner. Next is a free arm. This just gives you way more maneuverability with your sewing machine. There's a lot of sewing machines where when they don't have a free arm, it gets a lot trickier to do tighter turns and smaller things. And once you get to like sleeves and stuff, it gets small, so a free arm is good. The third thing is that the plate that you're sewing on will have measurement markings, preferably in both inches and centimeters. The fourth one is a thudder and makes it easier for you to thread the machine needle. And the fifth one is a cutter and makes it easier for you to cut the thread free at the end of your stitch. All of these things just make your life easier way, way easier. And the very last category is weight. If you foresee that you're gonna be moving your machine a lot, you know, toting it over to your best friend's place to sew with them, or just that like you don't have a stationary space to sew, so you, you foresee that you're gonna be like sewing in the dining room, next date sewing in the bedroom. It might be nice for you to get a lighter machine so that it's easy to move. The one downside of a light machine though is once you get into heavier fabrics like denim and velvet you or like bigger projects like drapes or like massive ball gowns, a lighter machine is not gonna be able to cope with all that heavy weight of fabric moving through it as easily. So if you have big dreams, maybe go with a little bit heavier of a sewing machine. Okay, that's enough for the criteria. Let's bring in the machines. Okay, this is the Baby Lock Zest. 
When I'm talking low range for a sewing machine, I'm talking in the like $100 range, give or take 50-ish. This one is like a very good beginner machine and in the lower budget range for something brand new, not hand-me-down, not secondhand, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot to take in, so let's go through it in the same system that I outlined before. So for the four types of stitches that we're looking for, it's good on all of those. And then when it comes to adjusting the width and the length of the stitch, for length it's got this dial up here, you can make it a shorter length or longer length. So over here there's this little gradient and then as you move to the bigger section of the gradient it's going to get wider as a stitch. Next up let's look at the things that make it easy to use. The bobbin is front loading, let me show you what I mean by that. This is a front loading bobbin and it's a little bit trickier to work with when you're a beginner but there are upsides. Typically front loading bobbin is utilized to make the machine go faster. You can also change the bobbin thread in the middle of your stitch. But the downside is now you cannot possibly see the bobbin inside this bobbin case and so you won't know when it's running out of thread until it suddenly does. And if you've done any sewing you know how painful it is to be sewing a ghost stitch because your thread has run out. This right here is the free arm, which is great. We've got this adjustable piece that can be taken off. And see, now it's like of a diameter where you could fit a small sleeve over it and still maneuver it through. But when this is attached, like this is, this is impossible. You can't fit any small child sleeve over this. The plate does have markings on both sides. It's got it in inches and millimeters, which is great. It's said online that it has a cutter I can't seem to find it though. Normally the thread cutter is located right here on the side and it also has no threader which means when it comes to this sewing needle you're going to have to thread it yourself instead of using a tool. For a beginner machine it is easy to transport and still a considerable weight. I would trust this with a hefty project. So that's what something you can expect in the $100 range that you might not have the really helpful doodads like a threader or a cutter. You may face a front loading bobbin but keep in mind that industrial machines often have a front loading bobbin for the benefits of its speed. But if you're not planning to do a ton of sewing and you just want something affordable to get you started and be reliable, this is not a bad option. Three, two, one, begin! This one, the pedal and the cord are attached to the exact same unit probably for the best so that you have one less thing to worry about losing. Now, I don't believe there's a cutter on this one, so the good old scissors. So let's move on to medium. And what we have here is the Janome Gem Gold. This is what I picked as a representation of the medium price range, referring to something that's maybe in the $300 range. And when it comes to the decision criteria for stitches, this one has nine stitches, which includes, of course, straight, zigzag, reverse, and buttonhole. So you're set for that. On top of that, there's a few extra stitches that can help you out. One of the ones that I use more often is the blind hem, which helps with formal wear, so that's nice to include. And then length and width, you don't have 100% control on it, you just have like stepwise control. So there's 
certain preset stitches that are different widths and then this style down here will help you to adjust the length of the stitch. Some of them it's like a full gradient that you can slide through. This one there's just kind of like preset stages so not like total customization. But for the adjustments in addition to that bit about the width and the length there is the tension dial. This will help you control the tension of the thread which will help you to have a nice and neat stitch. And now for the bobbin the biggest difference here is that this one does have a drop-in bobbin. You can see it right down here at the bottom plate it's all clear so you can clearly tell when you're running out of thread and make a switch before you regret sewing a ghost stitch. There also is the free arm feature I believe. This comes off to give you a smaller area to work with for the base. The plate does have markings in millimeters and inches, which is helpful. That's all the same as the previous machine. However, two extra features that could really help you out is that there is a built-in cutter back here to cut your threads when you're done. And there's a built-in threader, which is this little tool that slides down and helps you to thread your needle. The last one that is worth mentioning is that it does have an extra high foot, whereas when the foot can't even lift high enough, there's just a limit to how much fabric you can shove underneath. Um, so those little features are the kinds of things that you can expect when you move from the $100 to $300 range. You're going to get the threader, the cutter, extra high foot, things that make it easier to work with, but also things that give you just a little bit more project flexibility. One last thing that I noticed, which is probably not a deal breaker for anyone, but this one has no easy to access handle to carry the machine by, whereas the baby lock had this top handle and my sewing machine has like a slot in the back where you can insert your hand to pick it up. So it makes me feel like this one was designed to stay put and if you plan on traveling a lot it will be kind of annoying but I don't think anyone's really losing any sleep over it. Three, two, one, begin! Definitely not computerized because it turned on without the needle taking any action. So that's a good indication. Ooh, that is sharp. So apparently this is the threader, although I'm super confused how it works because this is not how threaded is normally pure, so I'm just going to hand thread it. This machine is so far much trickier to thread. Oh my god. hard button to press. Whew, that was quite the test. And now for the high category, if you just want to spend that coin on your sewing machine. It is the Singer C240 Featherweight. Part of getting a nicer machine is that it can come with a carrying case. This is kind of nice because it protects the machine and it prevents dust from getting on it, which really helps your machine to last longer. But if it doesn't come with a case, you can always sew yourself a case or just like cover it with a stretchy t-shirt. This pretty lady here is what I have selected to represent the high end of sewing machine purchasing. If you're gonna go brand new, if you're gonna just buy it and keep it for life, this might be the one for you. High end budget to me is like 500 and above. And I don't recommend this for anyone who's super beginner. This one is really good for a serious sewer and I wanted to include it just so you could get an idea of the kinds of features that sewing machines can do for you. Ooh, so satisfying. The previous two machines are electronic but believe this one has enough electronic features for it to be considered computerized because there's some programmed features of it like not just that it runs on electricity but that there is a computer operating it so when it's computerized instead of physical dials to select what stitch you want what you may often see is a number pad and that is used to make your selection and so this obviously is meaningless until 
voila, you look at the legend that's up here. Oh, this is cool. There's like double the dust protection with this lid. So therefore, this machine can now do 70 stitches. <laughs> All these stitches up here. And you'll see, um, so obviously it covers the basics, but you'll see a lot that are super decorative and you can use those to do a nice little embroidered finished edge, cute little lines, you can change up the thread. Uh, my machine has a lot of those kind of features too. I don't really even use them a ton because uh, I haven't really had instances where I need to do that. But especially with quilting or doing home decor, those kinds of finishes can be really nice. So now because it's computerized, it also doesn't use a dial to adjust the width and the length. So therefore, this is as flexible as width and length can get. You just press plus and minus to adjust them, and there will typically be way more stages that you can move through instead of just like three or four options. And then the final thing about adjustment is that there is a tension dial as usual. Now for use, this one has a drop-in bobbin. So down here, we've got a clear plate that lets us see the bobbin, just like the Janome that was in the medium range. This part is remove. whoa, this part is removable to give you free arm access. There are plate markings as always in inches and millimeters. So you're set for that. And here there is a cutter for your thread as well as, yep, a needle threader. Basically, it checks off every single box as you would expect at the high price point. And the extras that you get out of it being computerized is that you can control the speed of sewing digitally as well as with your foot, which makes it easier to hit very specific speed points and not rely so much on your exact touch. Normal sewing machines will have one LED light to illuminate the sewing area, but this one has two to give you full view of what's going on. Another computerized benefit it has is that it can be pre-programmed to tie off your stitches so that you don't even have to do like the forward backwards forwards to secure at the beginning and end of the stitch it will do it for you like my sewing machine you can even pre-program them to always end a stitch with the needle down or with the needle up just depending on how you like to work and how that helps you to work faster I think this one also has an extra high foot not bad I don't think as high as the Janome and they even have a program feature with your foot pedal that when you tap the foot pedal, the needle will just go up and if you tap it, it'll go down. So just little things where once you have it and you use it a lot, those little things make everything so much more efficient. Three, two, one, begin. Here you can see them all side by side. The Janome is definitely the smallest out of all of them. The Singer has like a pretty nice form factor, a bit like how a nicer car looks. And then the Baby Lock over here, which has a handle. Um, I don't know if you really noticed, but the Singer has one too. Oh, whoa. Okay, even the handle moves nicely. Look at that. The number one thing is all three of these would be so suitable for any beginner. It really just depends on your price point. And at the low end, $100-ish for a brand new machine, you may have to compromise on one or two things, but it's really not going to put a big limitation on what you can do. As you move up, sewing just gets easier, 
faster. And in these two cases, sometimes you can sew more fabric. But there's a tricky kind of like unspoken part about this whole sewing machine shopping thing, which is that even when they advertise certain features that they can do, in the end, you want a machine that is reliable, will stand the test of time, and won't like eat your fabric and your thread alive. All of these are well reviewed enough to be safe in that range. Um, but depending on who you talk to, just like in the world of cars, people have their own opinions about which ones are built to last and which ones are have easy repairs, all that kind of stuff. But one thing that really helps when I approach that is thinking about which machines have been in the market for a long time, because the longer it's been in the market, the more it's been selling, doing well for the company, um, the more they've invested in being able to provide repairs and services for it. Whereas if there's a company who's just like pumping out a brand new machine all the time and kind of like discontinuing old machines, that's not as good of a sign because it means they're moving on quickly. And if you buy one of their machines, maybe in a year or two, they'll forget about you and forget about how to help you if you run into trouble. And finally, the giveaway. So Sewing Machines Plus is giving away a brand new sewing machine. I have the link in the description to enter the giveaway. It is just for Canada and USA since that's who Sewing Machines Plus services. So I'm really sorry if you come from elsewhere. Thank you Sewing Machines Plus for this giveaway, for supplying these machines so that I could show you in person how they look and compare to each other. I hope you've been enjoying this So It Begins series. We will see you in episode three. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>